When you're that young, enjoy the game. Win, lose, or draw, enjoy the game. When you receive the ball, first touch, ball control, dribble, nice pass, boom. Anything extra in terms of, okay, no, make that. No, don't tell a, a seven year old to make a run <laughs> or a defensive cover or to press or to counter press. No, for a seven year old, just play. I, you know, I, I hope when people view what Scaloni says, they listen to it specifically. Because it's something I've been saying for a long time. And I think it is something that people need to heed. So, just, so, so let's just read this here statement. Because people, many people DM'd me and say, you know, you have to do a video, you have to do it, you have to do it. I was like, yeah. You know, and when I read it, I was like, you know, this and if I definitely need to drop a vid on this. So he says there's an excess of analysis, too much. Nowadays, everyone knows how the opponent plays. There's so much information that in the end, the most important thing, which is the player, is almost remote controlled. In our case, I don't know about other teams, but there's a risk of losing the essence, taking away from the player what is precisely their best quality. If you're constantly telling them what to do, you run that risk. We convey just enough what we believe we need to transmit. The truly important thing, so as not to overwhelm them with information. We are losing the essence of a ball, not only at a professional level, but also with kids. My children play in Spain and are overwhelmed with information. They receive the ball and they are already being told what to do. There's so much stuff there. I mean, we'll break it down, but there's already so much stuff there that I can break them, but we'll keep going. There are fewer dribblers. Because if they barely get the ball and you say, pass it. Imagine if Messi, when he was eight years old, had been constantly told by his coaches to pass it. We wouldn't have him today. It's impressive. Because football has become such a huge thing. Everyone reads stories and thinks that with that, they can already manage. If you tell a seven or eight-year-old to make a diagonal run, covered de defensively, he's seven years old. Let him play with the ball. Make mistakes. And when he's 14 or 15, then we can start correcting. It's a message for the future. This is a sport and the beauty of football should not be lost. There's so much stuff here. Like you said, that's, like there's, there's too much stuff here. Like, let's just look at some of the essentials here. Um, we convey just enough. So we believe we need to transmit the truly important thing so as not to overwhelm them with information. You know, guys, how, you know when you, you see a substitute and they're about to, no, for, for, forget that. So when they're trying to bring his sub on, when the sub is still trying to come off the bench, they have like an iPad and a sheet of paper with freaking diagrams and info. As they're about to come on, your info, there, 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 there. When the players are on the pitch, you see this with Pepper or Teta, yo, there, there, go there, oh, there, there, come, come, come. It's like... Bro, we've already spent hours on a trading pitch already. Had discussions, one-on-ones. Once the referee blows the whistle, okay, I'll take some of that within me, but I have the talents. I'm the guy with the talents. So it's got to be a two flex of, I'll take some of that information, but let me now interpret based on the situation I now find myself within the context of this match. Unless you don't believe I'm smart enough to take it upon myself to be like, okay, I know what you generally said, but in this situation, let me now use my own ingenuity to interpret this situation for myself as an individual. But when you just give them info upon info upon info, we are no longer looking at football players, we're looking at robots. And that's the point that he's trying to make here. My children play in Spain and are overwhelmed with information. It's, it's crazy. Because, and I've always been saying this, that how many kids do you think will want to play football or um, want to follow football into the senior level? 
Because if you take the fun away, a seven, eight-year-old wants to have fun. A seven, eight-year-old is not thinking about, okay, I need to do this because I want this to be in my career. No, in, and a seven, eight-year-old wants to have fun. If you're not having fun as an eight-year-old, you will stop because you get bored a lot easier. An eight-year-old isn't just going to stick with it because, oh, no, no, you know, this can give me something and a great future. No, they're like, no, I want to enjoy myself. If I'm not enjoying my, my, myself, I won't even do well. So even if my parents are forcing me to do this because they think I'm talented enough, if I'm not enjoying myself, I won't even be able to play to the best of my abilities. See, there are fewer dri dribble blas now. Imagine Messi when he was eight years old had been told to pass. Yeah, look, the beauty about Messi was he was he knew his ability to dribble and he focused upon that. And even when he came to Barca, which was much more of a passing system, because he had that nature from Aditina and New old boys of dribble first, if you can dribble, trying to get past guys, he knew that, okay, we'll pass, we'll pass, but he knew that, bro, this situation calls me that, you know, screw it, let me dribble. The goal against Real Madrid. You should pass the ball. But he was like, nah, I think I know I've got the ability that I have been cultivating since I was seven, eight, nine years old, which is that, no, I know I can get past these guys. I know that I can go from the halfway line to penalty box and finish. I should, the right thing to do is pass. Pep would tell me to pass because Pep would never agree for me just to try and take it to myself solo in a UCL semi against Real Madrid to go solo from the halfway line and score. But I know I've got the ability to do it. If I fail, okay, screw it, I failed. Yeah, the match was great, but I failed. But I'm at least going to try to attempt. Fortune favors the bold. Um, so, if you tell a seven or eight year old to make a diagonal run, cover defensively, you see, yeah, like you should. A seven, eight year old should not be told any tactics whatsoever. When you're that young, enjoy the game. Win, lose, or draw, enjoy the game. When you receive the ball. First touch, ball control, dribble, nice pass, boom. Anything extra in terms of, okay, no, make that. No, don't tell a, a seven-year-old to make a run <laughs> or a defensive cover or to press or to counter press. No, for a seven-year-old, just play. But the only thing to tell them is good first touch, good ball control, decision-making, make the right decision. Okay, sure, okay, you know. It was fine to shoot here. They should really make a pass here. Or through ball, pass to feet. The basics, the footballing basics of first touch, ball control, balance, when to shoot, walk on your weaker foot. And, and, and that's really it. <laughs> that's really it. You shouldn't be told about runs. You shouldn't be told about positioning, getting in the right position. You shouldn't be told about, oh, this, should, this is your off-the-ball position. No, not to a seven, eight-year-old. Because what you want to cultivate is that natural ability. Once you have that natural ability, as it says, when I get to 14, 15, 16, then you now bring the tactics in. Because now once you now bring the tactics in, they already have that core of my first touch, my ball control, my ability to dribble, my ability to, to, to get past people in a tight space, to shoot and pass. So those basics are already there. Bring on the, the tactics. I can now become an even better player. Because once Messi now got those tactics of like, you know, off the ball, press and everything, he had the core of first touch, ball control, balance, dribble, enjoying the game, playing, because that's football. You see, this stuff about counter press press, that's not football. That's just now, that's the more advanced tactical side of the game. The purity of football, the purity of football is control, first touch, dribbling, dribbling, tackling, shooting, passing. Those are the basics. <laughs> Those are the that is the basic purity of football. Really, your ability on the ball. Your um, your Quality ability on the ball. That is the core. Those are the, the hallmarks, you know. Um, but it says that it's a message for the future. This is sport and the beauty of football should not be lost. The beauty of football is in its randomness, is in its unpredictability. What Scaloni is talking about is these 
science nerds, these um, computer scientists, they're trying to predict football. They're trying to make football an exact science. You can never make football an exact science. It's impossible. It's impossible. The nature of football and just how football is, where it's 11 against 11, through the whole pitch, you're playing with your feet. It is isn't possible for it to make an exact science because there are far too many variables. There are far too many variables. And the beauty of football is it's jazz. Football is not pop music. It's jazz. It's, I never know what's going to happen. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. No, a data analyst would have never advised Maradona to take the ball from the halfway line and dribble past six players and the keeper to shoot. Because a data analyst will say, that is totally not advisable. That is a poor, poor choice. But these analysts, you're not footballers. You don't play football. You've never played football and you never will play football either at a low level or a high level. You're just a science guy. But for footballers, they understand that during the context of the game, you have to interpret things. Because Maradona was like, I feel this is the right thing to do in this moment. And the thing about football is, people, you can fail a billion times during a game. An attacking player fails hundreds of times. And a defender always wins out many times. It just takes for one Dubinsky. It just takes for the attacking player just to get it right once to, to say, what's up? That's the thing. So... My thing here is, what your boy is saying, it's, 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 it's key. And I'm so glad that Scaloni has said this, and I just hope that more and more people take heed of what he's saying and how important it is, because he's trying to protect the integrity and the essence of the sport. Because what, that is football. Football isn't robotic. Football is not about XG, about data analysis. Football is about unpredictability and it's about the belief in those truly special players because this is the key thing we do not watch football for Pep Guardiola or for Ancelotti or for Mourinho we, we don't I love Mourinho I don't watch football to see his taxes I watch football for Neymar Messi Mbappe Hazard Ramos <laughs> um, Desai, Tsura, Maldini, Piero, Figo, Ronaldo, Dino, Henri, Drogba. We watch it for the stars, for the individuals. Those, like when I wanted to go out and play football, I didn't do it because of Alex Ferguson or because of Arrigo Saki or because of Fabio Capello or because of uh, Marcelo Lippi. I did it because of Zola, because of Weyer, because of Beckham, because of Clivet, because of De Boer, because of style, because of Turam. Because I, oh, wow, damn, look at how good these guys are. Let me go out and try that. Oh, look at what Okocha just did. Let me go out and try that. Look at what Ronaldo just did. Let me go out and try that. Oh, look at that pass that Piola made. Let me try and do that. Oh, look at how Maldini defended. When I'm defending, let me do what Maldini did. So this it's, it's always and should always be about the individuals and the stars. The managers, you're just there to provide a blueprint. Stop getting in the way. You are there to provide a blueprint. But the players are there to interpret that blueprint and cook. Let them cook. Because the beauty of Messi is he's there to cook. Because if you just inundated Messi with info, 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 what happened? And the reason why this is so key, that was the issue with Messi earlier on in his Argentina career. Because once Messi was in Argentina, he still had the whole Barca info in his mind of like, okay, this is Barca, this is Barca. And you could tell that he was playing as if he was in Barcelona. Oh, I'm supposed to receive that pass. If I pass you, you should pass it to me here. You should be positioned here. Pass, give and go. But once he now grew older and he more matured, he now realized that I've got to be a totally different beast for Argentina. I have now have to now take it upon myself as an individual. This is not Barcelona. The system and the unit is not going, it does not function the way it functions for Barcelona. I now have to take it upon myself as an individual to now try and make things happen as an individual rather than relying on the system to say, what's up? Pepe ain't here. 
Luis Enrique ends here. Scaloni isn't Pep. Scaloni isn't Luis Enrique. So Scaloni has only just given me a blueprint and he's saying, yo, Messi, it's a general blueprint. Stand here, but it's on you. I believe in your ability. I've given you a blueprint, but you have to take it upon yourself and now take full agency of the situation. I am not going to micromanage you. I'm not going to inundate you with information. I'm not going to spoon feed you or just very carefully guide you through data analysis. You are the footballer. You are the talent. Here's a blueprint. Go out and cook. And that is how we have those iconic moments. Those memorable moments that we saw at the Copa America and the World Cup. So for Scaloni, it's very important to really heed what he's saying. It's really important. It's really important to, 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 to hear what this guy said because it's because he's trying to save football. He's trying to save football and he's trying to still save the essence of the game. Because I don't know how anybody who truly loves football can argue against what he, he, he's saying. XG, that's why I never I don't want to hear XG. I don't want to hear about that crap. That that means nothing for me. The eye test will always be the most important thing. Because in my view, Get this analysis crap out of football. Get it out of there. What will always win through is right tactical decisions being made in key, key times. Your training, your man-to-man -man management, of course, your formation. But at the end of the day, there's only so much tactics that you can do. There's only so much training you can do. There's only so much market managing you can do. At the end of the day, it comes, it comes down to the players and their ability. So it's two things. It is your preparation and the player's execution. Micromanaging during a game isn't going to help. I'm sorry, it's not. The game has, has started now. So you now say to a player, yo, go here, 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 here. While a guy is playing, it's not going to, I'm sorry, backing orders at a player during a game, especially a high octane game, it is not going to help. Because all that should have been done prior to the game. Once the referee blows that whistle, it's now down to the player to now execute without you screaming in his ear. <laughs> because how many times do you see a manager backing orders and a player's like, because, okay, yeah, I get it, but bro, I'm playing the freaking game right now. And what you're saying to me ain't going to work right now. Because you're not playing this, this game I'm playing. You're on the freaking sideline. I'm actually on the damn pitch. <laughs> so... The key thing is about preparation. Once you've prepared them, they now have to go out there as players and now take agency of the situation. And that's where the true talents comes th um, through. So, but we have to protect the integrity of the sports. And the, in the, the integrity of football is in its randomness and it's in its unpredictability. The beauty of football is in its unpredictability. Once football becomes predictable, it becomes robotic, it becomes sterile, and it takes away the fun and the passion of the sport. And especially for young kids coming through, we will not get another R9, Neymar, Cristiano, Messi, Mbappe, if we inundate these young players with useless data analysis information. Let these six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds cook, enjoy the sports, fall in love with the sports, play football the right way, the pure way, and let them bring that randomness mixed with tactics to entertain us, the football fans. Also, football fans, we want to see the Messi's, the Ronaldo's, the Neymar's, the Mbappe's, the Romario's. Those are the guys we want to see, and we want to see them do magical things that we can't predict. We are not here for the tactics. We're not here for the XG. We are not here for the counter press. We're not here for the managerial data analysis. We are here for the techniques, the Salinis, the Shoam legs, the Lalas. The players are the reason we love the sports.